register, coach. Yeah, sure, old time hockey. Like Eddie Shore. Yeah, yeah. Coach, our line starts. Man, you get better looking every year, Ken. Nice. I just here is just me is just. I wish I had your hair. <laughs> Doug Podell, the yeah. Doug Podell secret. You know that, eh? No. Uh, oh, the uh, he did the Windsor uh, thing. Oh, the hair thing. The hair, yeah. yeah. It look, looks good. But, oh, well, you wear it well. So, hey, Tommy Morris or Detroit City TV again with the legendary play-by-play -play announcer for the Detroit Red Wings, Ken Kell. Ken. Great event here, DSBA. Uh, another fine uh, looking forward to the upcoming season for the Red Wings. Uh, last year's performance, pretty gritty. Uh, the youngsters come in, push to the playoffs. Uh, are you expecting the same this year or maybe a little easier stroll to the playoffs, hopefully? What are you, what are you looking forward to this year? Well, Tommy, I'm really hoping that uh, the overall health of the team is a lot better than it was the last couple of seasons. The Red Wings lost 440 man games to injury last year, and it wasn't it was about the same last year too. So if if they're healthy and Datsuk and Zetterberg are healthy and Jimmy Howard and the rest of the team, I, I think they can compete with anybody in the National Hockey League. And you know who who knows if you stay healthy, it's a grind. But if they stay healthy, I think uh, they could possibly win the division. They could be up there with the Boston Bruins. But with that said, uh, there's a lot of parity in the National Hockey League, and it's really hard to put together a season where you win 50 games. With the players that were uh, developing last year and really were thrown into the fire for a lot of them, uh, having that, um, I guess, the, uh, uh, that season under them, are you looking for a little bit, uh, uh, um, uh, someone you're looking in particular that may come out of that, that uh, like a Nyquist from last year, or uh, come and really perform? Yeah, I, I think the key for the Red Wings right now is the fact that these guys are a lot older or one year older than they were a year ago, and that really means a lot because when you're a rookie and you come in and you played your whole career in Grand Rapids and you come up to the NHL it really is a learning experience but now that you've played there for a year a guy like Nyquist, Tatar, Riley Shan you kind of know how the league is run you know how you have to prepare for a game and what your expectations are and 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 I think by being a year older you're a lot smarter and and it'll be a lot easier for you to adapt so yeah, I'm looking forward to good things from the youngsters and again I think I think that's it's a learning process in the National Hockey League. You're not going to grow all in one day. It takes time. It takes years. It takes experience. So with another year under the belt from these guys, like I mentioned before, I think they'll be okay. Yeah, and that's what you know, uh, General Manager Ken Holland touched on a little bit earlier, uh, is that you know, some players develop you know, uh, quicker than others, whether it's emotionally, not just necessarily the game itself, but emotional-wise also has to, maturing has to do a lot of it. A lot of these kids are very, very young, so that takes time in some cases to develop. Um, on the uh, uh, camaraderie, I heard uh, uh, prior um, someone mentioned that they don't necessarily believe in camaraderie. The guys don't have to go out afterwards and have a couple milkshakes, uh, whatever the case may be, to, to, to win. How do you feel about uh, camaraderie as a team and in and, and general overall with the scope of a, a season? Well, I think it's important. I think it's important, especially when you go on the road, that uh, you know you bond together, you go to a movie together, you go out to dinner together. and. We, we talk about pros and cons of now being in the East. Um, you know, one of the cons, I guess, is the fact that every time we went out West, it was always three games in four nights or, or three games in six nights. And, and you really had a lot of opportunity as a team to get together where you don't now because, you know, every trip is close when we go out East. So um, that type of thing is taken away. But with that said, there's still plenty of opportunity, you know, on off days for the guys to get together and bond. I think it's key. I, I think you have to have togetherness. Um, it's not the most important thing, but it's always nice to have a locker room that's uh, in it together and in it to win it. From observation, uh, I, I know for a lot of years uh, with uh, uh, Scotty being here and, and Ken and them building a team up through, through Scotty and then uh, Coach Babcock taking over the team and uh, some people in the media had mentioned that prior they thought it was still Scotty's team up until maybe through last year when finally the kids came up through Grand Rapids under Babcock, uh, Mr. Babcock, you finally had that sort of the older uh, players prior uh, had gone. Do you feel or do you get a sense that maybe you may see the best coaching from Mike Babcock now that this is really his group of youngsters that they have something to prove under, under him? Well, I thought Mike and his coaching staff really did the best job I've ever seen a, a head coach in the National Hockey League ever do. I, I mean, you, we talk about all the injuries. At one point in the season last year, 
the Red Wings were without a center iceman. Five centers went down, and that's when the Red Wings acquired David Legwan just to help out in that position. Um, but I think the coaching staff, it's, again, if you take five or six or seven top players off the Blackhawks or the Bruins, they're not going to win it either. Yeah. So what the Red Wings did to, uh, to make it to the playoffs when a lot of people didn't think they were going to qualify for it, it really means a lot to way to the way that Mike Babcock coaches and the way his coaching staff developed these young players and put them in the right situations to to really uh, win. Well, it's certainly going to be an exciting season. I know you're looking forward to it. Uh, it's your time of year, my friend, and uh, best wishes to you. Oh, one quick last question. What are the odds of the Maple Leafs making the playoffs? <laughs> well, you don't have to answer that. You know what, you. last year, I'll, I'll tell you what. No, I'll tell you what. Uh, I like I like the Maple Leafs. I think, you know, Brendan Shanahan's their team president now. I think uh, they're headed in the right direction. Uh, you, the problem with the Leafs last season is the fact that they gave up way too many shots, and they have to do something about that. But, you know, I, they're not bad. I mean, it's, it'll be a great rivalry again, Detroit and Toronto, now that we're in the East and in the same division, so I think it'll be good. Yeah, well, there's many problems that wrong with the Leafs. <laughs> On that being said, hey, Ken, thanks for your time. Right, Ken Tom. Kale, boys and girls. Tommy Morris, Detroit City TV. Follow the Wings uh, all season long with reporting on DetroitCity.tv. And, again, DetroitRedWings.tv uh, and uh, DetroitRedWings.com. So take care. Thank right, you, Tommy. Sir. Appreciate right, thank it, you. man. Yep. For you. That's awesome. You're always great, Ken. I appreciate right. it, man. Thank you so much. There goes Jeff Henson into the corner. I think it's Jeff. No, it's Jack. Uh, 17. I'll have to check that later. Huey puts a crushing check on him on the boards. Oh, I'm telling you, things are really going on out there now. Now Steve is in front of the net, and I think that's Steve.